everybody, this is Liz with Connecting Threads. I am so excited to be here today because I get to show you how to make one of my favorite blocks, the Sawtooth Star. This is a very classic and traditional block, but what I love about it is it's simple to make, easy to understand the different components, and it's really fun to customize. There are endless ways for you to change this block just by adjusting where the fabric lands in all of those different components. Now, this very classic version has one color for the star, and one color for the background. But let me show you all of the different ways that you can change the look of this block just by changing where the fabric lands. These are nine different variations of the Sawtooth Star. And as you can see, they're all very different just based off of playing around with fabric. So I asked the Connecting Thread staff to make a couple of these blocks so that you could see how versatile it is. We've got everything from very simple. These are gonna be what we're creating today, just two colors, one for the center of the star and one for the background. So these are just opposite color adventures here and they're really simple and very easy. Now, you can also play around with color in a couple of different ways. We have these blocks here, which have a different color for the center, the points, and the background. And what I love about these two blocks is that this plays with kind of a lighter center and darker points. This plays with a darker center and lighter points. So these are both kind of a three fabric sawtooth star. Now this one is also very similar as you see here, but because this center square is so large, you can play around a lot with what you put in it. So what I did is I took the basic sawtooth star that you see here, and then I used that center block and made another sawtooth star to go in the center. So it's really, really fun to play around with all of this space that you have, especially in that center block right here. Now, the bottom row right here has been sewn by my wonderful coworker, Sydney, and I asked her to get very wild with how she built her sawtooth stars. So on this one, she used some leftover striping so that you can see how it's striped inside those points. So those are all different fabrics that she sewed together into little strips, and then she used them for the points of the stars. This one, she went in and she added a nine patch in the center, which I thought was really fun. And then this last one, she built it entirely out of half square triangles. So we've got half square triangles in those corner blocks. And then she also used four half square triangles in the center to create a really fun shape. So just by adjusting all of the fabric inside these blocks, you can create some really, really cool stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about the sizing formula for the Sawtooth Star. Now, the Sawtooth Star is built on a four by four grid, and I've actually printed out an outline of this block on a four by four grid, so it's a little bit easier for you to understand. So these corner squares are one quarter the length of each side. And so this is how Sydney built that really fun block that I showed you at the end of our block variation. Right down at the bottom, she separated each one of these squares into its own individual component. Now, what this means is that this block is incredibly easy to size because all you need to do is create a block that is divisible by four. So this corner block right here for our 12 inch by 12 inch block that we're gonna be creating today is one quarter of this 12 inch length. So these are going to be in their final sewn size, three by three inches. These flying geese blocks, which is what these are right here, these are actually two of these corner squares. So these are going to be six because that's three times two by three on the short side. And then we have our last three by three corner square here. So it is very easy to figure out sizing. And remember, don't worry if you are a little confused by the math or you just want the cheat sheet, I will have that ready for you so that all you have to do is pick the size of your block and I'll tell you what size the components are. Now this center square is basically four of your corner squares. So this is going to be for our 12 inch by 12 inch block, six by six because four of these three by three corner squares fit into our center block. And you can see it here on this grid line. So one of the reasons why this sawtooth star is so versatile is because as long as you have a block size that is largely divisible by four or easily divisible by two, because four is just an even number. So as long as it's an even number sized block, it's gonna be very easy to resize. 
Plus, when you look at it on this grid, you can see how easy it is to adjust the color components of each one of these individual squares. Now, for the components of this block, we are going to be doing this two tone, so one for the background, one for the star, and do this two tone block. The components that we are going to prep are going to be our corner squares, our flying geese blocks, which are our star's points, and our center square. Those are the only three components of this block. And because we only have one center square, we just have to make one cut for this. For our corner squares, we need to make sure we cut out four of those. And for our flying geese blocks, we will cut out four of the backgrounds and then eight of the points. So it is a very simple formula to remember. And again, you can rely on that cheat sheet. If you are making an eight by eight inch block, a six by six inch block, I will have all of the information for how to cut out these different components. For your 12 inch sawtooth star, we are going to be figuring out the sizes that you will need to cut out of each of these different components. So let's go ahead and start with this corner square. Because this is a 12 inch by 12 inch block, one quarter of 12 is three. So this will need to be a sewn in size of three by three. Now what that means is the size that you will see this block sewn into a quilt, this little corner square, will be three by three inches. But remember, we need to add a quarter inch seam allowance on each side. So what that means is we're gonna take three by three and we are going to add a half an inch. So two quarter inch seam allowances, one on the top and bottom, one on each side. So our finished cut out size will be three and a half by three and a half inches. And you can see it just goes over the edge right here. That's that quarter inch seam allowance. So you will need four corner squares at three and a half by three and a half inches. The next will be your center square. So this sewn in size is six by six inches. Again, by adding the seam allowance, that quarter inch on each side, you need a six and a half by six and a half inch square center block. Now, the last component are these little flying geese, which are gonna be the points of your stars. So for the background, so behind the stars, you need a six by three inch block. So by adding the seam allowance, you will need a three and a half by six and a half inch rectangle. Now, the last component are these little points. And I understand that when you're looking at them, especially if you're newer to sewing, you're like, how am I supposed to cut out a triangle? Don't worry about it. You actually don't cut out a triangle, you cut out a square, and I'll show you a really easy method for creating a great flying geese block. Now, you'll notice that these points are nice and crisp, and that is because this method is no fail. So it is going to be a great way to create really crisp points on those flying geese. So for these green points of the star, you are going to need to create three and a half by three and a half inch squares, just like our corner square. And I'll show you how to sew these in a minute, but you are going to need eight of these three and a half by three and a half inch squares in the green color. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You will need one square for each of the points. So I have all of mine pre-cut out here. This is a really, really great project for fat quarters. So if you have a couple leftover fat quarters lying around and you wanna play around with this block, this block does not require a ton of yardage and so it's very easy to cut out of a fat quarter. So once you have your components all set, we'll go ahead and move on to the sewing component. So the first component that we need to sew together are these flying geese blocks. Now, if you've made these before, there's lots of different methods. And if you know something like the four at a time method, you can always do that. But I wanna show you how to make a one-off flying geese because it is still a really useful skill. And if there's a lot of newbies out there, it's totally okay if you've never made one of these blocks before, they're super simple. So these flying geese are gonna be the four different point components of your sawtooth star.
So each flying geese will have the background, which will be this yellow, and then it will have the points of the stars, which are this green color. So let's go ahead and start by taking one of our yellow rectangles, our three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, and we're going to take one of the green squares that we're using for our points. We're going to flip it so that right sides are together. So you'll see the back of the fabric, and you are going to line up your square along one of the short edges, so that three and a half inch edge right there. So you should see quite a bit of that yellow rectangle to the right hand side over here. Now the next thing that you need to do is mark your seam line. I like to mark this with these Freon gel pens. We sell these on our website and they're absolutely fantastic because when you draw on the fabric, if you take it over to your ironing board, the pen line will disappear with the heat of the iron. So it's really, really useful for stuff like this. Now, this is also gonna be on the back side of the fabric, so use whatever marking tool you have available. So what we're gonna do is we are going to mark the line that we're going to sew. So it will be from this corner right here to this corner of the back of your green square. So don't worry about the underlying yellow rectangle here. We need to focus on creating a seam line on the back side of our green square. So let's take our ruler. We're gonna line it up to where those points are and we'll go ahead and draw our seam line here. Now, whatever marking tool you use, just make sure that it's not something that's gonna bleed through the fabric. Because every once in a while, if you use something like a Sharpie, it'll bleed through to the other side. That's why I really like these pens. So we've gone ahead and we've made our little diagonal line. This is where we're going to be sewing. So it's a really great way to make sure that you sew a straight line. If you are anything like me, you need a little bit of help sewing a straight line. So don't worry and take the extra time to draw that line. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place. And remember, because we're going to be sewing along this diagonal line, you don't need to pin around the edges here. You need to pin along this line. Now, just like some people don't like pinning. I love pinning. I think it is very important and it is very helpful, especially for beginning sewers that need a little bit of help learning their sewing machine. The only thing that I will mention is make sure that you take out your pins as you're sewing. So you never wanna sew over, especially pins like this. These are really big, thick pins. If you sew over this, your needle might hit it and pop off. So. Always make sure that as you're sewing along, you take them out before your needle hits those spots. So we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and then I'll show you our next step after that. So now that we've drawn out our diagonal seam line, which you can see right here in red, this is the line that we're gonna be sewing on. So we're gonna take it over to our sewing machine, we're gonna drop our foot down and we're just gonna sew right along that line. Don't forget that because we've pinned it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you take these pins out as you go. And once we're done, we'll take this over to the cutting board and I'll show you where to trim. Now that you've sewn your first diagonal line, I ended up using red thread so that it was super easy for you to be able to see. We need to cut this section down here. So we've got our finished flying geese up here. If you take this little extra edge of your square and you flip it up, you can see that we've basically created one of these corners right here but this is a lot of fabric for a seam allowance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this down to a quarter inch seam allowance. So take your ruler, you're gonna measure your quarter inch, you're gonna take your rotary cutter and you're going to slice off that corner. Now remember to save these because you can actually use these scraps later because they're already pre-cut corner triangles. They're really fun to play around with. So I always like to throw these in my scrap bin. So we've gone ahead and we've cut that off. So we've got our quarter inch seam allowance right there. Now we're gonna take it over to our ironing board. We are going to iron open this seam. Now, I want to tell you one thing about pressing. So a lot of people, when they get their iron and they put their block down, they like to take their iron and they like to wiggle it around. Remember that this is a cotton textile. So it has a lot more elasticity to it like all you have to do is take this flying geese block 
look at how much I can just go ahead and stretch it. Depending on how you've cut these blocks, this fabric has a lot of stretch. So when you go ahead and you take your iron and you wiggle it all around, sometimes what can happen is you stretch your fabric. So remember that an iron is a pressing tool, meaning that you want to press down and press down. So that's what we're gonna do with this seam. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of push it open just a little bit. I'm gonna take the edge of my iron right here and I'm going to very lightly push it up against this seam. Then once it's largely pressed down, I'm gonna lift my iron up and then place it down. If you just can't like not iron without a little wiggle, you can give it a smidge of a wiggle right there. But again, remember this is a pressing tool. So you're pressing down and lifting up. And you can flip it over to make sure that your seam lays nice and flat, press down, lift up. So now we've got our first part of our flying geese block right here. What we need to do is add our other point. So we're gonna do exactly what we just did over here. We're gonna take one of our corner squares or our point squares. We are going to lay this down. Now you may have noticed that I already took my gel pen and I made my red diagonal line. So this is showing exactly which direction you want it from one corner right here, pointing all the way up diagonally towards where these two green points are gonna meet, so right here. If you are making a lot of these blocks, or if you're like me and you like to batch process a lot of this, one of the things that I suggest is you take your blocks and you mark the back of all of them. So every single one of these green squares, I've marked a diagonal line. Remember, as long as your fabric isn't directional, so I'm using faux tweed, it's not really directional, I can go ahead and I can just mark all of those diagonal lines at once and just be done with it. So I highly suggest you do that as you're processing your sawtooth star block. It's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. So we have our green square in place. And just like last time, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to take our pins. We're gonna pin it in place. There we go and we're gonna take that over to the sewing machine. So now that we've got it over at the sewing machine, we're gonna sew along that red line that we just created. And again, don't forget to take your pins out as you go and go nice and slow so that you can create a really nice straight line along this diagonal. So we'll go ahead and line this up. We'll drop our presser foot and we'll start sewing. And now we're gonna take this over to our cutting mat and I'll show you where to cut your seam allowance. Just like before, we have our red seam line that we just sewed at the sewing machine. So just like last time, we're gonna go ahead and cut our quarter inch seam allowance, grab my ruler, line up my quarter inch, grab my rotary cutter, and slice off those corner triangles. Again, I'm gonna to toss these in my scrap pile to save for later. Then we'll take this over to our pressing station. Again, you can kind of open it a little bit if you'd like. Remember that you don't wanna swoosh this guy around. You wanna take it right up to the edge of where that seam is. Give it just a little bit of a push. And I'm kind of lifting up as I go. It's very minimal, but just to make it a little bit more obvious, I'm lifting up, pressing down, lifting up, pressing down. So once we've got that seam nice and open, I'll go ahead and do a final press on the front side, flip it over, do a final press on the back side. And now we have our finished flying geese block. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create four of these. So you're gonna take the last of your yellow rectangles and the last of your green point fabric, which you've already marked your diagonal lines on, and you're gonna take these over to the sewing machine and basically just repeat this process a few more times. Once you have enough of your flying geese, that is where these points are gonna come from. And once we've got all those sewn, I'll show you how to lay it out and then we'll do some row sewing. And this is the best way for you to get this block sewn as fast as possible. Now that you've sewn all four of your flying geese blocks, 
Now we can go through and we can lay out our block. Now this is what I like to do because we are going to sew the rest of this block in rows. So there's gonna be a top row, a middle row, and a bottom row. So let's go ahead and take our flying geese and we're gonna set them where they're going to be sewn. So we've got our top, we've got our sides, we've got one for the bottom, and one for the left side here. So you're already starting to see the sawtooth star layout. Now we have our corner squares. So we've got one for each corner here. So we'll go ahead and lay those out. And when you're laying out your block components, this is where you can play around with color a little bit as well. If you're looking at this and you're going, you know what, I wanna make this a little bit more fun, this is a great time to change out your center square or your corner squares. Now, once you've laid it out, this is gonna be our top row our middle row, and our bottom row. The top and the bottom are pretty much identical. It's just these flying geese that are flipped. So don't worry if you screw up anything as far as that goes. If you need to flip one around, you're gonna be just fine. These components are really, really simple. The middle row, you always wanna make sure that the bottom section of your points, so for purposes of this block, it'll be the largest part of green right here. You want this to match up with your center block. Because if we swivel this around, all of a sudden the points are facing the wrong way. So always make sure that when you're laying this out, you've got these two sections matched up properly. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking one of our corner squares, we're gonna flip it over so that right sides are together, and then we are going to pin this and sew it down. For the middle section, we're gonna take this flying geese block, we're gonna flip it over, and we're going to sew quarter inch seam allowance down, down this line. And then the bottom, just like our top row here, going to flip this over, we're gonna pin this down, and we're gonna sew along this line. Now remember, especially when you're dealing with larger sections like this, you really wanna make sure you pin. I completely understand that this is an additional part of sewing that a lot of people don't like. But because fabric is so flexible, as we saw when we were kind of pulling our flying geese block earlier, if you don't pin this, and depending on what foot you have on your machine, you may accidentally pull the fabric out a little bit. So you really wanna make sure that you pin this in place, especially in sections where you have a seam allowance right here. When you are lining this up against the sewing machine, if the bottom part of your foot gets caught, it can accidentally flip that seam. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that once I've got it lined up, I take my pins and I pin in the seams. So this seam is the one that will face the sewing machine. So what that means is the foot will come this way and it could potentially loop under this seam right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pin and I am going to pin directly into that seam. This is gonna help keep it in place. Now, you are gonna remove it once we get to the sewing machine and the needle is coming close, but most of the time, by the time you get close to this, the foot will be over the edge of this seam. So when we get to the sewing machine, I'll make sure that I point this out to you so that you are paying attention. Now, the rest is up to you. I like to always make sure that I pin both sides. So I'm going to pin the front end and I like to pin the back end. Again, if you are not much of a pinner, I completely understand. But if you're new to this craft, I really recommend that you get in the practice of pinning. You are gonna have much crisper blocks if you pin along the way. Now for the flying geese blocks right here, one of the ways that you can avoid having to pin this in a way that is really annoying because you have a seam allowance on the back side right here. So this seam allowance, if we sew this way, that seam allowance is gonna be facing the sewing foot. So what you can do is actually flip it over. Now, when you sew this line, we're gonna be sewing from left to right here. This seam will just automatically go down. It saves you from having to do a little extra pinning in some of these thicker seams. And it makes a really big difference because you don't always know if a seam is on the bottom side 
You don't always know if it's flipped around, which can be really tough. So by just flipping this over and sewing on the side with the bulkier seam, you're not gonna have as much worry about a seam flipping over on the underside of your block. So we'll go ahead and get these pinned, take them over to the sewing machine, and I'll show you our last steps. All right, so we've got our black over at our sewing machine. Don't forget your quarter inch seam allowance, and then just go ahead and sew. Just like our last row, line this up, quarter inch seam allowance, and we'll go ahead and get to sewing. Now don't forget, you have a pin in this seam right here, and you're going to want to get close to it, but make sure that you still take it out before it hits the needle. So we'll go ahead and start. If you feel like your seam is lifting up a little bit, don't forget that you can lift up the presser foot and kind of tuck that seam under a little bit before you continue sewing. And there we go. Now that you've sewn these rows, starting out our corner squares to our flying geese and our flying geese to our center square, we need to press these seams. Now, the reason why I didn't press them is because I wanna show you something. The way that I press these seams is very important because it helps reduce bulk on your finished block. So what you don't want is these seams all coming together in one place into a massive giant monster seam. So I press these very specifically and I'll show you exactly how. We're gonna start by, take, by taking our top row right here. And again, the bottom row is pretty much identical. The flying geese is just flipped over. So this concept will be for the top and the bottom row. You're gonna take this flying geese and you are going to open it up and we are going to press the seam facing to the left. So what that means is this bulkier seam right here, so where the seam you just sewed, your corner block to your flying geese, and to the edge of this flying geese, that's a pretty bulky seam right there. So what we don't want is to try and fold that over and then create a super bulk seam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press it facing out towards your corner square. So we'll take this over to our pressing mat and I'll kind of push it open with my hands. We'll take our iron and just like before, we kind of lightly press that open with the edge of the iron. Then we'll go ahead and press. And I like to do the flip over and press that seam right there. So this seam is now facing that way. It is facing towards the left or towards the outside of the block. The corner square on the bottom is going to be exactly the same, but the center square, we are going to face this seam and iron it inwards. So we're gonna be facing to the right. This seam, just like the one at the edge of the flying geese, this seam right here is really bulky. This has a lot of bulk to it. So what I like to do is we're just gonna kind of flip it around and we are going to press the seam facing towards the inner center square. So we'll go ahead and just like we did before, I kind of use my finger to open the seam up just a smidge. We're gonna take our iron, do a light push, light push, press down, press down, flip over, press that seam down again. And now, we have two opposite facing seams. So let me go ahead and iron this one out and I'll show you exactly what I mean. These seams are very important because if you have all the seams facing in the same direction, what can happen when you're actually quilting this in whatever you're using this block for, you end up with these areas where it's just a monster seam and it's really tough to sew through. So ways to reduce seam bulk are very important. So when you look at these two blocks, Eventually, we're going to be sewing these two rows together, but when you look at these two blocks, these seams are facing in opposite directions. A, this makes it very easy for us to line up seams, but B, because we don't have a repeating seam here, there's one seam on one side, one on the other. Again, this is a great way to reduce bulk, so it's very important you pay attention to how you're ironing your seams. Now, we've got our three rows halfway done. We need to do the other half. So. We are going to take our corner square, just like before, flip, pin, and sew. Our flying geese, flip, pin, and sew. And our last corner square, flip, pin, and sew. And then next, I will show you how to sew each one of these rows together. Now that we've gone through and we've sewn our rows together, you should have a top row that is a corner square 
a flying geese block, and a corner square. Your middle row should be a flying geese, a center square, and a flying geese. And then your bottom row should be identical to your top. It should be a corner square, a flying geese, and a corner square. Now, I've already pressed these down, but what I wanna make sure you notice here is that just like I did with the other side, I have pressed my seam outward. So I have pressed this top row and the bottom row because they're basically identical. The flying geese is the only thing that's flipped here. These seams are facing outward. Now, this is very important because when we pin our rows together, these seams won't overlap with our middle row. So make sure that you are pressing your seams out. Now, for the center row, you always want to press your seams inward. So you should see that both the left and the right hand seams are facing in towards the center square. Now, when we sew these together, let's go ahead and take our top row and we are going to flip it so that right sides are together and we should have these two seams line up with the ones underneath them. But just like I was mentioning earlier, these seams should be facing in opposite directions. So rather than having a ton of bulky seams lined up together, now we have seams that are facing opposite directions so that when you sew over it, you're not sewing a huge bulky seam. So let's go ahead and pin this in place. I like to start with all of my seam points. So that's gonna be right here and right here. This is where your sawtooth star points are meeting the edge of your star. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip that over. And then I'm gonna lift this up here. Now you always wanna make sure that you are pinning the seam allowances like this here that are facing the sewing machine. So we're gonna be sewing from the left side right here over to the right hand side. Now that means that this seam will be facing the sewing machine. That means that this center seam right here will be facing the sewing machine. And then don't forget to check the back side. This seam on the underside is also going to be facing the sewing machine. Now the last one is gonna be your corner seam right here. This will also be facing the sewing machine and this is where you're gonna pin the end of your row. Now. I understand if you don't like pinning, I completely get it, but for long rows like this, this is our biggest seam for this entire block. And so for me, it's really important that I pin especially these points right here and this center point because I wanna make sure that these seams line up. And because fabric, as we have talked about before, fabric is very flexible, it's very malleable. And so you don't want the seam scooching over a little bit. So let's go ahead and get these pinned. I'm gonna line up my seams right here. I'm gonna take my pin and I'm gonna pin directly into the seam here. Now it looks a little bulky, but remember you take the pin out before you sew over it. So you don't have to worry about that. Now the next section that I like to pin is my other seam. So I like to make sure that both of my main seams are pinned before I pin anything else. And remember, you are going through the front of the fabric towards the back, so you wanna make sure that you're grabbing that seam on the back side. So I always like to flip it over and make sure that you can see the pin on the back side right there, so I can see that shiny little silver part. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the beginning of my row right here. I'll make sure that's lined up. We'll pin the beginning of the row. I'm going to pin this middle seam right here. Go ahead and take our pin. Make sure you get a good chunk of that seam right there. And then last, we're going to pin the end. We're gonna pin right over here. Make sure that you are grabbing that seam that is on the underside of this. So just like before, sometimes it's nice to check and make sure that you grab that seam on the back side. So you can see that I got a good chunk of it. So once you have this pinned, you'll take this over to the sewing machine and don't forget to take those pins out as you go. Just like before, we're using our quarter inch seam allowance and don't forget that you've got a couple of these seam allowances pinned down. So be careful as you go through that you're not sewing over these and you're taking them out as you go. And remember, you can always lift up your presser foot and readjust what's under it if things get a little folded over. So we'll go ahead and pop this down at about a quarter of an inch and we'll get to sewing.
and there we go. So now that we've got our quarter inch seam right here, this is gonna be our full width of the block seam, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Now, pressing here is a little less important. I'm not saying it's not important, but you have a couple different options here. This seam is bulky no matter what. There is a lot of seam here. So what I like to do is press this open so that each side of the seam gets a little bit of the bulk. You can choose what's best for you. So if you wanna press it one way or the other, go for it. For me, I found that pressing this middle seam open is very helpful. And once we press that open, then we're going to be able to sew on our last row. So we sewed on our top row, now we need to sew on our bottom row. Just like before, we're going to take this, we're going to flip it onto our block so that right sides are together. We are going to pin the seams that are facing the sewing machine. So we're going to end up pinning, remember, we are flipping this block. So we are gonna be sewing a quarter inch seam along here. So I know it's a little confusing at first, but all we're doing is we are pinning this exactly the same way that we pinned this row. We've just turned the block around 180 degrees. So because this block is identical on all sides, it's not like you're running into an issue where this is a directional block. All sections of this block are treated equally, which is wonderful. So we flipped it around and just like before, we're going to pin our seams pin our seams, pin our fronts and our ends, and we're gonna take that over to the sewing machine. And voila, your Sawtooth Star is finished. Congratulations on sewing your block. Now, as I showed you earlier, there are so many different ways to play around with the fabric in this block. So now that you know how to sew it and understand the basic components, you can go absolutely wild with fabric combinations. I am so excited to see what you all create and don't forget to tag us on social so that we can see your finished creations.